Welcome back, you cover junkies, you, to Cover the Cooter. <laughs> it is the show where we don the tight dad shorts and golf visor to sit in our flamingo <laughs> chair and guzzle the bud of life. That's right. And, uh, yeah, keep up the hustle the bud there. of life, is the bud of life, um, does, is it the Bud Light with lime? I feel like uh, it should Oh, it be. has to be. It has lives to, have oh man, do flavors. you remember that? Do you remember when Bud Light with Lime came out? We used to drink. I know, I, I couldn't stop drinking it. Oh, I know. I remember you and I used to drink uh, a few of those before we did certain it's like, tasks. It was like the, it was like the pole, <laughs> it was like the polar water of beer. <laughs> I, I I I don't have a Bud Light story, but I have a Bud Weiser story. This is a this is actually mm. a P Will story. Did it I make took, you wiser? It, it made you wiser. So I took my uh, my cousin Preston William P Will for short to a McMinimins bar where they serve pretty much just McMinimins. Uh, beers, Going down right? to their uh, McMinis? Yeah. This is a local story, too. This is a Northwest, uh, Pacific Northwest. Um, and he, he leans over to the bar and he goes, can I get a Budweiser? And the bartender's <laughs> like, excuse me? And he, and he leans Budweiser. forward even closer to the guy's face and he goes, can I get a Budweiser? <laughs> and, and the guy looked at him and looked at me and I and I like kind of like tugged it tugged him back to the bar stool and I was like he'll have a a, a, a hammerhead you know and um, and he was like what, what this place don't even have Budweiser it was it was it was some culture shock it was tell you, folks. it was one of those yeah. Texans clashing with Northwesterns <laughs> moments right I can't distinguish yeah. what you're trying to say that was like a yeah, leader of cola moment. I'm, I know they, as a leader of cold <laughs> <money. laughs> and the, it's like how how is a bar not going to have Texas water? You know, so that's right, and it's yeah. all better with a dash of lime. But yes, yeah. folks, it is August. It is uh, the Brengineers' least favorite uh, time of the year. Mine as well. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, pistachio mist is all out. It's been sold out. It, it, it is. G- give me them. Give me them frosty uh, fall and winter days. No, nope, you can't have it. It's hot. Nope, it's sweaty. It's I'm. Steaming. I'm officially not wearing clothes. It's fine. Uh, yeah. It's cool here under the table studios. It's it's a wet wild summer whether <laughs> you got a pool or not. That's right. Um, as ever, I am tapes to the screen on my left. Is the half man, half machine engine known as Brengineer? Uh, <laughs> Brengineer, Brengineer. I don't know where the knobs and dials uh, meet flesh. It's it's getting weird. Uh, and to my right is the beautiful shiny one known as Inks. Yeah, you got to keep it shiny. You got yeah, to keep you it must shiny. Keep it shiny. You got to keep it wet at all times because if you're wet and shiny, no one can touch you. That, which you know he, what? he has the Sham Wow guy's personal phone number, and he comes over and just rubs and just, his uh, his scalp until it's just glimmering yeah, like a uh, like a cue ball. Inks, dome. Inks is the real life uh, Mister Clean, and that is just the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and remember, Mister Clean in the later years. That's right. You can follow yeah. along with us today uh, at CoverToCoder dot com. Now, real quick. I'm going to fish hook out here and catch all you listeners here in the mouth <laughs> since we're wearing our gaiters. Uh, I'm not going to let you wait till no, the end of the way. episode because, folks, this is crazy. Yes. This is our second to last episode of the season. Of the season? The season! We have one last episode, and that's an episode for you, folks. Right now, we got for Finn you. Briscoe writes at Instagram. He's in the pool for a free shirt right now and having that's his right. cover decoded. Do you want your cover decoded? <laughs> you want that cover decoded because you want that free shirt. So send us mm. your covers. All right? At and Instagram. A fine shirt. Cover decoder Instagram or coverdecoder.com Gmail. Do it. Anyway. And send us a little blurb, too, because we're going to read your little blurb, and we care about your opinion here on Cover Decoder. We do. Right. And, um, and there we are. And you want that shirt because that shirt is awesome. That's right. But listen up, nerds. It's time to get <laughs> ripped and go basking with the babes. Because it's summertime. And that means <laughs> schlockbusters. Yeah, man. Schlockbusters. Flockbusters. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. We're talking Schlock about... Schlock beats. Yeah. We're talking about films that may or may not have come out in summer, but that represents summer to Bips. us. Films. 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 Summer. 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 Buds. Yeah. Babes. Dudes. Sunday. Muscles. Yeah. 
Whoa. Hairy chests. I love it Come all. On. Saxophones. Saxophones. <laughs> Lots of saxophones. Right and chains. Right Stuffed yes. pants. <laughs> Fire coming out of a barrel. Bim, bim, bim. Atkins diet. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> uh, get shredded. Get shredded. <laughs> that's right, folks. Get ready to sweat out some, some lumps of ham uh, from your schleck <laughs> diet and sit back, crack a, a, Bud, Light, a, Bud, a Bud Light with lime, because we're about to go into some wet summer titles. And I believe, kicking us off, what do we have here? Uh, some sort of misty island I'm seeing. Uh, what's this theme song? Is this John Williams yeah. over here? Yeah, bro. Dude, sometimes you just gotta look out over the waves and you gotta think, what's out there? Because tonight, I, Inks, have... My blockbuster is a Spielberg classic. Yes, a classic tale about a boy and his unlikely friend from another world. I am, of course, referring Wait, to Joseph Mazzello and Sam Neill in JP tapes. My dear Brengineer, welcome to Jurassic <laughs> Park. <laughs> I believe it's Jurassic Park. My dear, my, my dear. We've spared no expense. Yeah, we've spared no expense. Yes, that's right. That's David Attenborough's brother, oh, John man. Attenborough, the other Attenborough in oh, Jurassic Park. Oh, seriously? Wow. Okay, ready for some ignorance decoder here. I thought they may have been the same person. I kind of uh, oh, no, in that same, no. in that same, same boat. <laughs> that's impossible. You did um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh. I, There is going... It is going, you guys are going to have to carry me by the shoulders like a, like a drunken beach bro who's had too much and is trying to get me back to the car because I will wobble off onto whatever, uh, you know, dune trail I find in this, in this, uh, this presentation, but I'm going to try and stay on track and make it back to my, you know, my Chevette and, uh, sleep this, uh, sleep this buzz off. But yeah, I'm gonna and start. Real, real quick, Inks, we need a moment of silence. This moment of silence right here is so that Brennan can insert a special clip. Okay, there's the special <laughs> clip. Yep. I, if, if I if I sing it throughout this whole entire thing, I won't have a voice. So Iron Maiden is just gonna have to be represented <laughs> in that one clip. But just so you know, in a time when dinosaurs walked the earth. Yes, Iron yes. Maiden. Yes. You need to cover the Jurassic Park theme. Just saying. Do that. <laughs> I can. I can actually. I can picture that very well. Oh, it'd, me it'd too. Absolutely. It'd be epic. It'd be epic. <laughs> I would be. I would be. I would be more. Sh I would be more glistening than I am now. But let me start with Jurassic Park, the book, and the design of the book jacket. Now, I'm talking tonight about the Jurassic Park logo which eventually became the, the poster, which eventually became the cover to everything. It is iconic. You've seen it everywhere. It yes. seems so simple. It seems so intuitive, but it has a history, friends. And that's what I'm talking about when I say I need these guys to keep me from wobbling off onto these different side quests because it is very easy to do when it's talking about dinosaurs. When Inks is talking about dinosaurs, I could go anywhere. But this logo has... <laughs> a sordid history and it actually is an amalgamation of different artists feeding off of each other and um coming together into this you know this this chimera this hybrid of a logo so let's get started first slide i've got chip kid the designer of the Jurassic <laughs> park jacket hey <laughs> now, you chip finally kid you finally found a, a guy that instead of looking like your uncle just looks like steve jobs ripoff yeah, no, well, he is a character. If you look him up, he did a TED talk. Um, I may, I may have to link to that TED talk because it's, it's it's short, but it gives you a very good taste of the type of person Chip Kid is. He's but, looking at uh, me very disappointed right now. He's looking at me yeah. like I just made a decision and he disappointed. This, <laughs> this is the dad. He doesn't yell at you. He just goes. Yeah, he's he's saying. I, I think he made the wrong easy. choice. I'm yeah, I'm very disappointed you, in you. You that, made the that, wrong that, choice, Alan. <laughs> And just walks away. <laughs> that, look, that, that look says, I make this look easy. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> he got the job after, um, at the publishing 
uh, house that he was working at, the uh, Alfred A. Knopf. Prestigious. Prestigious. The Knopf. Yeah, the Knopf. Yeah, he had actually gotten a job as assistant art director. He had pictured himself working at one of these big design firms. But he took this job. Um, and at the time, he said he didn't realize how lucky he had been. But they had already gone through a couple of iterations of the design. They didn't want to have a flesh and blood, blood dinosaur on there. They um, they first wrapped the book in dinosaur skin, and Michael Crichton said it looked like a football. So ooh, they, ooh, they pitched too, that football ooh. to old Chip. And the first thing Chip did is he went down to the Natural History Museum right there in New York and um, looked at the exhibits and bought a book. And inside the book, he found a diagram of a T-Rex skeleton exhibit that actually had been unveiled way back in 1915 and was there until 1993. But that T-Rex skeleton was actually curated by Henry Fairfield, Fairfield Osborne, who actually gave the Tyrannosaurus its name. Wow. Yes. So this cover, this logo begins with... Fair f- with uh, Osborne, who had actually named the T-Rex, curated this skeleton, and a illustration was done of that skeleton in a book that was then bought by Kid. Kid then took that book and photocopied that that diagram. And if you click to the second or the third slide here, you'll see that there diagram. There it is. Boom. The classic. Oh, classic. Yep. Wow. Yeah, he took that photocopied it, took some trace and paper and started to trace over the bones and fill them in. See, this just goes to show folks, sometimes you don't have to spend a lot of time. This is just the classic um, example of when simplicity works so well. I mean, the the image here in its own way is, it is a skeleton, but so threatening. The way the ribs look like I don't even know, like knives and it's got the teeth and sort of the way the claws are. Um, and yeah, it tells you exactly what the book is all about. Right. And it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to me because he went and he uh, traced over it with tracing paper, filled it in and gave it that silhouette look, which was supposed to kind of um, represent the bones starting to fill in as if it was being, you know, um, resurrected. Which I was going to say, it kind of looks idea. like zo- zombie, uh, zombie Rex. Yeah. <laughs> Zomb- yeah. N- Nestor, Zomb- Nestor, Nestor the T-Rex. Um, <laughs> Nestor Rex. Triceratops <laughs> brains. Um, <laughs> but it's interesting to me because this T-Rex is from 1915 and it is still the kangaroo style T-Rex, meaning that its tail is dragging on the ground. It doesn't have that fulcrum shape doesn't have that leaned forward shape where it is um more uh predatory more of a fast moving killer it's still that lumbering dinosaur um uh mode but it is a cover for a book that's about resurrecting dinosaurs that's kind of on the cutting edge where you started to see dinosaurs in that full-on lateral pose so it's just it's interesting that a um an outdated uh, skeleton design actually represents a movie that would then signify the next step in the dinosaur depiction evolution. Because the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park are actually what dinosaurs looked like. They're, they're 100%. Like, uh, 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 they are with dinosaurs. Uh, uh, the, 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 the dinosaurs. Ooh. Hey, guys, let's look at this trail Ooh. down here. Um, real, so. quick, real quick, before we, before we move on, there's one more thing I want to say about this. This is yeah. the perfect summer book because, as you can tell, it is red, white, and blue. That's this right. Is, this is a this is American Saurus. It's got yeah. blue lettering, red lettering, and it's got white background. This is Summer Saurus <laughs> right here, folks. So, summer Saurus. That, that is that is uh yeah, that is American. There's as apple nothing pie. like uh there's nothing like America than uh dinosaurs eating stupid tourists. That's right. They that, almost that's put right. a ten gallon hat on him, but that got removed uh right at the end there. <laughs> Nobody eats better than an American T Rex. Um <laughs> So, Chip Kid knocked it out of the park with this jacket, which is on slide four. 
Also, can we just recognize that Chip Kid sounds like the name of the program that ends the world? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a great hacker name. It sounds also like a uh, Western, you know, star. Um, Chip it, Kid, it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Ch- yeah it, it could Chip also Kid, be star a, a, reporter. It, it, it could also be a Japanese anime, you know, character. You yes. Know, Chip Kid. Um, but he knocked it out of the park with this jacket. Michael Crichton fucking loved it. He even sent, uh, a, there's, a, there's a picture of a fax where he's like, fucking fantastic jacket bro (laughs) he was all about it they thought it was it was exactly what they needed so you've got you've got osborne influencing kid now the production for jurassic park the movie had already started before the book was even off the presses and now this is this is this is how much of a beast that that Crichton and his um publicist or, or agent is is they they knew they were on to something they had already sent the book to different studios and they had already landed universal and spielberg before the book was even out here's the thing it's a great book you're gonna want a movie you want to you gotta gotta buy it. the rights you want the rights you're gonna put a dinosaur in there right yeah, now give me a mock yeah. spare no expense spare no expense <laughs> i don't um. know what that is give me a latte instead <laughs> <laughs> um I want a Bud Light Lime. No, I want a Lime Bud Light. No, actually, combine them both, and I want a Bud Light Lime Lime. Um, (laughs) So Universal then saw Chip Kid's design, bought the rights to it immediately, because Spielberg had had this vision, and this is, again, a uh, director influencing the cover. You know, the cover can be influenced from many places, but the director has some pull on that, and he had envisioned the logo pulling double duty in the movie and in the real world. So you're going to see this logo on the merchandise in the movie. You're going to see it on the merchandise in the real world, which kind of hadn't really been done in the past. So you think about star Wars, there wasn't star Wars logos in the star Wars universe. You just saw that star Wars logo on, you know, in our world, but this was kind of breaking the fourth wall. And this is um, caring. This is caring about your package and being thoughtful about, you know, people knowing your right. brand your movie brand yeah yeah and and this is kind of like you know i don't know a ton about the the movie business i know this is a a show about covers because covers are important and we're fans of so many things but th- it just seemed like a big production back in the day because he then he took uh universal's senior vp of creative print advertising wow yeah very obscure mm, title bean there. shaped yeah. <laughs> um, Tom Martin, who then recruited a bunch of other boutique uh, uh, designers to then tackle what the logo would look like for the movie. Now, they had already had Chip Kid's uh, image in mind, but they couldn't help themselves. They had to try and flesh out some other things. So you click to the next slide. There are Ooh. a lot... There are a lot of these out on the internet. I just chose a few. Again, I'm trying to make my way back to my my, my Chevette so that I don't li- end up in the ocean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but these these illustrations were done um, under the art direction of um, Salisbury, Mike Salisbury, and uh, the artist was uh, Terry Lamb. And uh, when I first saw these, I mean, they're they're pretty cool. They're, they're How do you feel silly. about these petrosaurs? These are pretty silly. Now, this pterosaur down here in the <laughs> right corner looks to me like a dragon hawk. That looks like fire. Oh, eyes. absolutely. You know what that is? You I know what that is? That's off one of those Anne McCaffrey Pern books. That's yeah. what that oh, it is. is. Yeah. Okay, thank goodness, because I was running my I was running through my brain files today of dinosaur images, and I was like, what is this from? I can't figure I've seen this dinosaur before. This is This looks right off that Michael Whalen um Okay uh, Dragon Riders book. Either okay. that or it needs a, it needs up. a buxom silver haired woman with red boots. Writing on the back of it. That's <laughs> yeah. the other thing it could oh. be. It could be Man, Thomas that's what it was. It was the Michael Whalen. Oh, I wish I, I wish I would have figured that out and had the image ready to go. But um, we can we can scratch that that old wound later. If you click again to the next slide, 
slide six. And here's some more. Um, <laughs> as Mike, wow. as Mike Sasbury oh. described, what is with the the Aposaurus? Look at the gorilla shark. <laughs> what dinosaur is that? Yeah, that is such a 90s, like, yeah, bro, oh. here we go. We're going straight into the prehistoric. The is. Yeah. He's Watch coming out. in for lunch. <laughs> this looks like it belongs on the side of a monster truck. Yeah. Hold on to your butts. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, man. Oh, well, man. if that, if that uh, Michael Whalen uh, borrowing wasn't a... Um, wasn't a uh, a hint to what's coming next. I looked at these logos and I saw this one. If you look right in the middle, the middle left one with a T-Rex is taken on the Styracosaurus yep. or Styracosaurus. Um, I've seen that image before. I knew I seen that image before. And I was like, are they, are they taking a little out of a chip kids book and uh, looking at something old and trying to repackage it? And if you click to the next slide, you will see the painting oh, and the there cover. Yeah. yeah, that's right. To the yeah, dinosaur that's right. awesome painting. Dino Inks here, digging deep. You can't yes. fuck with Dino Inks, okay? Yeah, let me tell you, I've seen these things before. My brain files are <laughs> deep. If people's brains there's, are there's full of There's like, only one thing uh, Inks loves more than pinks, <laughs> yep. and that is uh, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Doesn't have the same ring, but um, yeah. Yes. So this is uh, Dinosaur Heresies by uh, Robert T. Backer or Bob Backer, which is mentioned in the movie when uh, Timmy says there's a book by this guy named Backer is like this thick. And the, this is a the badass sister. cover. This is a badass cover. This is a this is this is the the dinosaurs as fast moving juggernaut, uh, you know, powerhouses. This is um, is one this of the things oil? that actually do you know what this is? You know, I didn't go too deep into it because I, I'm like again, I'm trying to make it back to the parking lot. Yeah, but, there's a lot uh, of ocean. It's, it's got the, ocean. it's got that, it's got that soft, yeah, that glowing soft oil feel to and, it. And I know that, I could just see that being oil on board. Yeah, I and I know that I I say this all the time, but listen, everything is, a lot of things are so connected, and um, I could hold these guys hostage for a week and talk about dinosaurs, but I will. Circle back around to Bob Backer. All you need to <laughs> you know is that Bob... You want to get out of here alive, man? You better <laughs> yeah. ask my questions you know, about pterosaurs. You tell me. You I tell got me. questions you about pterosaurs. Do you believe in feathers? <laughs> was it my war? Um. <laughs> I just want to know if they walked on two legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is covered by uh, John Gersh. 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 Um, yeah. And Bob Backer is also a prolific paleo artist and he he did some early sketches um there's a famous one of a deinonychus running full out where his dinosaurs weren't lumbering um kangaroo they were full tilt um again powerhouses and he absolutely influenced how we see dinosaurs today and probably influenced the work of john gurch here that is why he did the painting or had the painting done um, or used on his Dinosaur Heresies book. Now let's click again to... Can I just point out how the Tyrannosaurus in this John Gersh picture has red glowing Terminator eyes? Yes! yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm, you I'm going uh, to eat you right now! <laughs> the, yeah. the cybernetic <laughs> organism. With, Dude, with, with look at this! It's tissue. Jurassic Ballpark! Yeah, I need your horns, your teeth, and your claws. And your claws. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's even got it's even got an Allosaurus crest, which uh, T Rex did not have, didn't need. Um, but that's right, know, folks. Dinosaur decoder. You heard it here. That's right. Throw and, down and, with inks. <laughs> and I also want to point out, like when when you're using dinosaurs as your your. Uh, your logo or your flagship or whatever, it's it's always a good idea to pick a dinosaur that has a lot of fossil remains that we have. If you're if you're uh, choosing dinosaurs that are based off of just you know a jawbone or a few <clears throat> bones here and there, uh, Spinosaurus, um, <laughs> chances are chances are when they dig up more of that dinosaur, its appearance may change. Luckily, here in the U.S., we are lousy with T. Rexes, and um, we have a lot of. Uh, full yes, yes, yes. The British mu- are much better at yes. drawing their T-Rexes. Yes, the Big more- Island <laughs> doesn't need your T-Rexes <laughs> because our dinosaurs have poise and panache. Um, <laughs> we spare no expense. 
But uh, that's just a little uh, little tapes or little inks tip on um, choosing your your dinosaur uh, uh, mascot. So uh, okay, first of all, so the the logo on the left it. here looks like the Mission Tortilla logo <laughs> but with dinosaurs. This is like and, uh, Sandals Resort. The Come one on stay. the right looks like the the sign for a baseball field. No, this is this is you've walked into your uh, local mall. Um, yeah. you know, food court and, uh, you want a, uh, a, 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 a Jurassic burger. So you go to, uh, yeah. you know, Jurassic park for a Jurassic yeah. burger. You want a double T-Rex? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want frog fries with that, bro? Um, <laughs> we spare those no uh, <laughs> well, the second one that I've got up here is also taken from an old painting. I saw that again and I went, Seeing you before, I know you. You are straight out of my childhood. That's why slide nine. Oh, Dan, do you know you're like dinosaur paintings, bro? Uh, listen, it, people fill their brains up with like like passwords. Yeah, and folks, knowledge this is not This is inception birthdays. of dinosaurs. I, <laughs> I fill my brain up with with dinosaurs. Um, uh, <laughs> anyways, whoever you two guys are. This is a picture <laughs> by, uh, or this is a painting by Charles R. Knight. He did a bunch of wow. murals, um, prehistoric murals. I have to. What's with Barney standing in the background? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's, he's keeping lookout. He's keeping lookout. This this dinosaur up front's like, hey, I'm about to go like really like do a number on this guy. Can you keep an eye out? Make sure that uh, no one sees. No hey, one's watching, hey, Paul, okay. how's it going? How's uh, how's your horns? <laughs> yeah, I thought I told you not to come around here anymore. Um, uh, real quick audience th this is a mural done um for the chicago field museum it is a depiction of um a triceratops about to get messed up or about to mess up a t-rex yeah look at those is, horns man with those horns that that uh, that t-rex is done dude yeah, look at those done. legs though look at those look at those not skip a leg day protein chugging uh uh, power squatting legs and yeah, but what's he gonna is... do those shitty arms seriously what a what a design <laughs> flaw okay what are you gonna do with those shit no one knows no this one knows what those shitty arms, arms are this thing is just gonna freaking ram it with those horns go right through the leg meat muscle and then <laughs> that right. t-rex is down and done he's, for he's gonna stab that t-rex right in the penis what you gonna and then, do and then I uh, jump Barney on back, back there bro. is gonna be like, uh, you, you need help, bro? Um, I mean, you told me to watch, so I, I guess I'm just gonna stand here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Barney's yeah. gonna eat his brother. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Meats back on the menu, boys. Menu boys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is kind of a, this is a painting done in 1926. Wow, um, really? So if the original Osborne skeleton. Uh, exhibit was 1915. This one is 1926. Um, Charles R. Knight, I will absolutely be back for him. Again, I'm saying that, but I, I'm going to hold these guys hostage at some point, and we're going to look at all the murals. Um, this guy is just a a foundation to dinosaur art. This is this guy does does the the landscapes. He doesn't just do dinosaurs in a swamp he's got these rolling landscapes he's these dinosaurs have um space these dinosaurs have weight they have form and you i can mean see i don't know is... it looks like these dinosaurs might be in a swamp <laughs> saying that... damn it, damn it. Uh, he's right he, they're on the edge of a swamp but what i'm saying is there's depth to his his work and absolutely um, yeah this there this really is t-rex is not a kangaroo rex but he's not the full-on tilted rex he's kind of in between but um, nonetheless, menacing. So the uh, the artist Terry Lamb had some had some uh, some tries up there. Um, some of them taken from older paintings, and I don't know what he would have done if they would have said, "That's great, choose that one." He would probably would have went, "Oh fuck!" He would have been like, "Hey, hey there's not going to be so a nerd out there who memorizes <laughs> this painting and like, puts it together uh, with the logo that I made." Yeah, thirty years I, later. I need 40 like years later. Yeah, two hundred thousand dollars or so to like make sure that I can use this. Um, <laughs> which, which sometimes when you're designing logos and and the, listen, 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 don't. Hey, you guys, if you guys love yourself, hey, there, this is a fucking you're gonna secret. Keep this, okay, you're gonna keep this fucking it's a secret. secret. Sometimes when I design a logo, Shh. I will pad my uh, my thumbnails 
with designs that I know are not going to fly. Oh, just, you just fuck. so you dirty, just to kind of, oh, just dirty just kind of direct direct the client towards the the juicy morsels. Like if it, you need to have some shitty fruit so that they can pick out the really juicy ones. However, that has backfired on me several times. Because like, well, I, I've, I've had horrible. them. <laughs> it's backfired when they do choose those shitty pieces of fruit, and then I have to, um, then I have to make them look good. But um, be careful if you pad your your, your stuff with uh, other people's work. So finally, finally, uh, they they decide to go with the logo or a part. Here of it is. Chip Kids. Oh, so good. Oh original. man. Yeah, folks. And so, this is just, this is the epitome of childhood right here. Oh, I remember when, okay, first of all, the Holy Grail was my parents allowed me to watch this. Right. Because uh, they of went course. and they saw, they saw it in theaters and they're like, eh, it's too scary for you. You can't watch it. And then it came Same. out on VHS and they bring it home. And next thing I know, I've got the Jurassic Park logo t-shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got Jurassic Park sneakers. Oh, the nice. toys. Uh, yeah. The toys. Oh, the toys. <laughs> the toys were amazing. The merchandise. Yeah. Uh, right yeah, now, this... folks, we're looking at the final logo. Yeah, so and this is classic. The yellow, the red. That let me tell you, let font. me take you back because this is definitely summer because I remember having those. I remember specifically having the pterodactyl toy and running around in my grandmother's oh, backyard with the with button it. that made the wings with, flap yes yeah, yes yeah. and it was hot and it was summer <laughs> and i was like jurassic park jurassic park and they had like these guns that shot nets oh, oh man baby. and it all oh, stemmed baby. from this beautiful now, logo now technically technically those were for those are toys uh from the lost world it doesn't um, matter. Oh. What I had, what I had, and this like blew me away when I was a kid. My grandmother always bought me a large amount of toys, and she got me the uh, original Jurassic Park car. Ooh, with a cage. Which had like a, it had no, it didn't have a cage, but it had a rocket launcher on top, and all the doors opened. Um, came with all these accessories, and I just drove that thing around <laughs> like the front lawn. Uh, oh man, it was. So Can we cool. just and the dinosaurs that actually? The dinosaurs actually had a piece. <laughs> Each one had a piece of flesh you could peel yes. off. Oh, oh yeah, right. battle damage. And they're like bones. <laughs> and they're bones of flesh yes, underneath. Yes, authentic which battle I was just damage. Like, what? Oh, oh the so 90s good. toys are the best. Now, what's more, what's more summer than the fact that the movie comes out, right? And, yeah. you know, the toys, of course, they're like, Wait, kids are going to be playing this week. We have to, we have to up the ante. So they give all the dinosaur hunters rocket launchers yeah. and like machine this guns. Was, this was deep '90s, folks. This movie came out June 11th, 1993. This is a summer movie. But again, deep '90s. Everything was wow. Everything was muscle. Everything Wheel. was rockets. Everything was eleven. <laughs> uh, dinosaur suits for battling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and th yeah. So, folks, if you if you haven't seen it, I know you've seen it. A giant splotch of yellow, circled with red, Jurassic Park in the theme park logo with the Dino Crichton dinosaur in the center, emblazoned. Right. So and I've always liked, I've always liked the little little jungle they stuck down. Yes. At the very yeah, bottom. the yeah, pubes can, at the it, bottom it, it, are perfect. Yeah. The little pubes. Yeah, you can. The pubes. Um, Remember, pubes always <laughs> the jungle always pubes. are the finishing to the piece. Don't Never shame them. The little, the, the you can, don't so you be ashamed. Can, uh, <laughs> you can thank, um, what was it? Tom Martin for that one. So this is amalgamation <clears throat> from three different um, people. So you've got kids, T-Rex. You've got um, Tom Martin decided to to add the yellow and frame it out and have the trees on the bottom. And then the text was actually coming from that guy, uh, Mike Salisbury, that I talked about, the art director, who had um, had helped develop stuff like uh, uh, he, he had been an art director on Rolling Stone magazine. He had helped develop uh, the Joe Camel. And this text actually has a... A, a little bit of a history, and I'm about to go off onto one of these uh, trails onto the uh, sand sand dune for um, Lover's Rock here, just real quick. 
And this is a this is <laughs> this is a case of it, you know, Lovers Rock sounds like a summer romance meeting yeah. spot. So I feel Maybe like this it's isn't Lovers Rock so much as this is. Um, uh, well, let me just say, the sad truth is, uh, racism is everywhere. Oh no! <laughs> or oh, or stereotypes no. are everywhere. Um, this type was actually developed by a uh, by a German guy who in 1914 had enlisted in the infantry um, during World War II and he uh, at the age of 39 he enlisted and after witnessing the horrors of war on both western and eastern fronts uh, <clears throat> his name is Newland who was a devout Lutheran returned home and set about to create a um, a modern typeface after the war because the the black typeface and if you know what I'm talking about it's kind of that um, old <clears throat> English archaic look was big in Germany at the time but it was really in, unlegible or hard to read and so he wanted to create a new typeface for all sorts of uh, religious uh, artworks and uh, religious based texts and so that's what I've got right here on the left but once the Americans got a hold of this type, they looked at it and they said, oh, you know what I see here? I see I see a chiseled chiseled type. And it reminds me sort of like a, sort of like a primitive, you know, um, who, who is this guy? Yeah. So the 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 type, which is still named Newlands uh, type, uh, ditched its German uh, religious roots, Lutheran roots and became the premier type for uh, for primitive for. Um, Shall I say jungle adventure? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. The the unwashed areas of the world. And I so, gotcha. Yeah, if you see here, I've got a a book called the uh, Congo Kitabu, and it is in that classic. What is it now is. known as Jurassic it's Park? It's got type. the red letters. It's got the yeah, red it's lines. It's got the little red lines right there. And um, later on, it, Mark or. Uh, um, Salisbury had claimed like he he hit on this idea that the people who were designing logos for Jurassic Park in the movie world would have, um, you know, saw this type and said, that's it. That's what we want. We spare no expense. That's what we need. That's what that's primitive. <laughs> and instead of saying like, hey, this seemed primitive to me, he thought, oh, this is what these guys probably would have used because they they don't know any better. And they were just uh, trying to slap stuff on lunch boxes. They were trying to sell yep. things. So and it's so it's actually kind of a it's like a, a play on corporate uh, uh, slimery yes. a little bit there. And, and and who can say who can say that he himself was not the one who was the was, ball liquor was, was the ball liquor <laughs> and coming up with this corporate slimery? Or if later on he said, "Yeah, I was I was playing a character." Um, <laughs> Someone Either called way, him out. No, yeah, really what it was is this deep social thing that I wanted to put in there. Yeah, no, I didn't use it for that. <laughs> Either way, this uh, this this type um, that started out as a German type then became synonymous with, with primitive. And it is carried on today. It, it, it really is effective, and even more so now that it's been associated with Jurassic Park. And... Um, uh, again, we, moving forward, we we have to we have to make choices that um, you have to draw responsibly. You have to make choices that are um, understanding the history of 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 the art, but also the truth is it's an effective typeface for what it is, um, yeah. despite its its sordid history. So. There's there's a lot of ways it could have gone. You could have gone with the the, the chiseled uh, the rock uh, type, but um, at this point it is cemented as the Jurassic Park type and as the the type. It's of taking the it back. Mesozoic, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That's right. It's taking it back. <laughs> now this goes to show you, folks, that when you, I mean, you can just look at a cover or a piece of art, um, something as simple, which is simple as the Jurassic Park logo, and. Uh, there is deep history in all these things. Oh man, we are gotta, finding that out right now. You just have to you just have to get in there and dig around and it, it's probably amazing the things that you look at every single day and you don't even realize 
uh, the history behind it and all the things that went into its making. You also have to have a profoundly deep memorization of various dinosaur books and logos <laughs> that you've seen as a child. Right. Right. This one, this one kind of blew me away. I, I wasn't expecting it. Um, you know, th this type has been reused and used and used over again. And um, I, I just wasn't expecting to find the history that was there. It's, it's again, it's important to know it and um, important to acknowledge where it came from. But again, it's taken on its own um, persona. And, and uh, again, it, um, it represents so, something totally different at this point. I, I misspoke earlier. The the type is called Newland, but the um, the original artist of the type is not. His name is not Newland. His name is actually uh, Rudolph uh, Koch or Co Coke, however you say that. Rudolph Koch, who designed the Newland type to be the religious um, type of of uh, the new Lutheran church. But and now graces our Jurassic Park logo. And now graces our Jurassic Park logo and any other uh, type, any other uh, parodies of that therein. All right, I'm moving out of this uh, tangle briar of, uh, of uh, racism. <laughs> and We're moving uh, past type I am decoder. sweating so much talking about this because it really is uncomfortable, even though it's, it's a big almost part like of our you're childhood. in the jungle yourself there. Uh, Woo! Thanks. Okay, I'm so saying maybe some pterosaurs behind you. <laughs> While they were struggling along with the logo and um, all of the uh, pitfalls within, the poster was being worked on by a John Alvin who had actually done um, other posters for other um, Spielberg productions such as E.T., such as Gremlin. And, and he also got the word from... Uh, the higher ups that they didn't want to, they didn't want to show dinosaurs outright. So he kind of went the kid way and he wanted to allude to them with shadows, with eyes, with footprints. Nice. And you can see some of the examples here, which I feel like are pretty effective. I, I see two effective ones here. The The bottom okay. left is amazing. Like this is, I get why I didn't use it. It's straight up horror movie. Yeah. But <laughs> if I saw this, like oh, oh man it's great. So what, what, what you're it. seeing is yeah you've you've got um it looks like a painted cover uh a painted poster it's got all this foliage and then there's sort of an eye looking out yeah. from between some of the leaves which is effective enough but if you look down there's this like teeth wicked toothed maw and yeah. oh so effective and then my second favorite is um with the island it's got, it says opening yep. 1993 and it's the silhouette of this giant. I mean, essentially it's a bad, uh, it's a bad pun, but it's a, <laughs> it's an open transource uh, Rex mouth and you're, and you're peering through at the Island. So my favorite um, is on the very the bottom, jaw. the very bottom right hand corner. And it's uh that says alive. It's, it's when I was a teenage T-Rex. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so a goofy kid like, becomes a wear T Rex without his parents knowing it. Mom, what why are my legs so big? But my summer. arms are so short. <laughs> this Tyrannosaurus Rex is doing the Thriller dance. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> and it's, it, it just looks like uh, the guy took a picture of his son's like bath toy uh, and made it. Yeah, a silhouette he's like howling the, at the oh. moon. Oh, it's so bad. This is yeah. This is teenage uh, T Rex. That would have sunk the movie. <laughs> well, then John Alvin got the word that they were going to use the logo that you guys saw earlier. They were going to use the amalgamation of the kid image with um, some of the sugar put on by um, Salisbury and then uh, Martin. And so he said, "Okay, I can work with that. I'm going to try and incorporate the logo into the poster." So if you click to the next slide, that is what oh, we are Oh, yeah. At. Some more poster Here we designs. Go. And, and this, this kind of, <clears throat> you guys, I'm going to link to all this, but this kind of shows you the process of design. I mean, painting is yeah. one thing. Doing art is one thing. But design, it's 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 kind of its, its own animal in the fact that, I've said before, it's like mining away all the detritus, yep. all, the, all the little bits so that you are – left with uh the the image Pure that you're essence. looking for to re the essence the yeah. essence uh, um the <laughs> of the film and yeah i mean all of these 
all of these potential covers are are pretty much turds, uh, except <laughs> yeah. for one that I, that I think is really good. Um, the, there's a one at the top right that honestly it looks more like it's like Lost the World. poster for a like yeah like a documentary yeah. or a dinosaur yes. documentary or something and it's like a dust cloud and you can see yeah. the silhouettes of dinosaurs running through really well done but i mean like when there's one on the bump, bottom yeah. yes in the yeah. middle the national no, the one on the bottom T-Rex. bottom left yeah and it's got this cloud it's Rex. got the the dinosaur against the against the moon it looks totally like a national lampoon's oh, movie oh yeah or or the et the jp with yeah, uh, Sam oh, Neill so in the cheesy. basket as they're flying over uh, Jurassic Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So. So yeah, and, and we end up with the the one that we all know and love, and the one that you know in nineteen you know ninety two or early nineteen ninety three, you have seen uh, before it came out, and you're like. I wonder what the heck that's all about. Right. I mean, it doesn't tell me anything about the movie, but I'm still this uh, is a perfect super VHS excited. box from right, right. from front to side profile to back. It is beautiful. Yeah. The colors are so well planned. Yeah. I I it sh- all the images yes. you see are beautiful. I love the red sunset above with the trees fading into black. Yes, it's great. And and I'll say this childhood um, back to like the posters. Alvin had they decided on an image and then finally he got the call at the last minute before before he uh, he started this large painting of a 40 by 60 um, painting of a gate of the park with the with the with the reptilian footprints coming out. He had almost finished this painting and they got the call and Spielberg said, you know, I made an executive executive decision. We're going with the logo, nothing else. And that's why you got the logo <laughs> with the black. Shit. Uh, poor guy. <laughs> you know, Alvin probably got paid in the end. But, um, you know, you never know what you're going to get out of out of the design process. And one of the things that did happen was um, Alvin's wife, Andrea, had said at one point um, as kind of a tagline because they were they were jokingly throwing out different like cheesy taglines, but she said, you know, 65 million years in the making. And that ended Dude, up on serious? the poster. Are you serious? Yeah, that ended are you up serious? on the poster. What is yeah. with these guys' wives making yeah. that happened yeah. in that happened yeah. in um in our last episode. Yeah. Listen to your wives. Listen to your wives, people. Yeah. Yep. They'll find you dead D and G D artists. They'll uh they'll come up with uh, taglines <laughs> for your your book or your movie. Yeah, Alien. Uh, alien hit the uh, alien. Gibbs wife made in space no one can hear you scream. In space no one can hear <laughs> yeah. you scream. Yeah, and so moving back to what had uh, tapes as Trevor DeChoder filling up um, was the VHS. Oh, I will fill this box with more than <laughs> just dinosaur dust. Box set. Let me tell this you is, what. This, this I had with me. I carried around. I remember looking at it and 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 being intrigued and excited and and slightly disappointed that I didn't see more. But that that slight disappointment led to more uh, just staring at the box set. Because there's only one dinosaur on there, or no, there's actually two dinosaurs on the back. But you, again, it's it's a perfect tease. It's a perfect portal. It's a perfect doorway. It doesn't show almost anything, but it just shows you enough. Right. It shows you a little bit of the horror because you got Sam Neill in the rain looking up at something. What's he looking at? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you He's show looking- it shows the two kids who are laughing, and it's like, oh, there's like. Uh, you know, brother sister bonding going on the family element. Wait, are those you have kids the, homeless? Yeah, you you have the uh, excitement of science as a scientist uh, uh, or or uh, Hammond is is yeah. playing Hello, with this dinosaur. One. Look at this little, little dinosaur! One. Touch Push. his scruff! Push. Touch his scruffle! And Push. and then you have and then you have <laughs> the um, the mighty dinosaur, the brachiosaur. And, and, the, the brachiosaur, which you hardly see in the movie, but it's there. And it's that first moment of CG that you see, which still holds up today. And it's like, Whoa. I don't know, guys. Yeah. I think it's a diplodocus myself. Yeah. You know, I was <laughs> when I was <laughs> when I was researching when I was researching this, I was like, listen, I'm I am such a small fish. I've got a day job. I, I do design and artwork and stuff on the side, but I am no means eating from art. But I, w- I was thinking to myself today, I could not have made this. 
I could not have designed it. For one, I would have got a I would have gotten hung up on the fact that it's called Jurassic Park, and obviously <laughs> the Kermitosaurus is from the uh, Cretaceous period and not the Jurassic period. Yeah, I um, can see it now. I yeah. can see it now. You're just sweating, and like calling uh, me in the middle uh, of the Mr. night. Mr. Spielberg, can we call, can we use something that was actually from the Jurassic, <laughs> like an Allosaurus or like a like a, a Stegosaurus? Because um, I don't know if you've done your research, but T Rex came way later um i just i can't deal with the pressure of making stupid dinosaurs start <laughs> real yeah yeah so th- there's a lot of things that i would have gotten hung up on and and it's important to just fucking relax sometimes and and go with uh, what feels right go with your gut you can see where i'm gonna link to these things you're gonna see where they got all these different images where they were trying to come up with a better image than the the one that they originally had um settled on and in the end, they just went back to the logo. And I've had that happen to myself several times. A lot of times you just kind of go with your gut. You go with your initial feeling of something and you get out of your own way. Yeah, one one last thing that's kind of interesting about this uh, VHS set is that the the logo is not yellow in the middle. It is red and is outlined. Oh, yellow. Yeah, you're right. You're it's, right. It's Absolutely. Split. And no. you know what? Here's the thing. Uh, the yellow actually seems very effective in like a theme park setting. Like yeah. it, that feels the, more, the, the red feels a lot the more red's sinister. Danger. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The red says danger. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The sun is going down folks. Yeah. Actually, and you know what? That'd be interesting. I, I need to watch the movie again. Cause I, I'm wondering, cause this logo yeah. is in the movie. I believe. I wonder if it's yellow or red. It is. It's yellow in the movie. I remember pretty well. Right. Right. Yeah. How cool. Yeah. There's like, they wear yellow hard hats, don't they? Yeah, I think so. Moving team. Or are they, or, or are they blue? Or are they blue with the uh, regardless the, hats, the yellow hot, logo? I can't you've remember. You got your popcorn <laughs> on your lap, regardless. and you're gonna watch dinosaurs stalking through the desert, gnawing on some heads. Yeah, and it's gonna the be desert, beautiful. The jungle. The the jungle. The swamp. Did I say desert? <laughs> you said desert. <laughs> they're gonna be just. Yeah. Des- they're gonna be dessert. Yes. So. I, I could keep going on. I could. There's there are other Jurassic Park movies, folks. I will be back. I will be back to hold these guys in my my Dino Dungeon and and, and just uh, you know tell them I about. I want to go the, to the Dino the, Dungeon. The, the fact that Dilophosaurus was actually from the Triassic and was a lot larger than the depiction of the movie and never had a frill because those things don't show up in the fossil record. Um, that I could go <laughs> on for hours, but but it's so cool. So there cool. are so many blockbusters. There's so many more blockbusters to 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 see out there, and they don't all have dinosaurs. No, and I'll tell you what though. You wait till the sun starts to set and it's hot, and you get your Bud Light with lime sponsored, and BL. you sit back in your <laughs> foldable chair and you project this on the side of your house and you watch that while you mm. dab the sweat mm. with a. Red and white checker right. handkerchief. It still holds that's up what to this, this movie day. is. It still holds up to this day, and that that's you know still again I could up. go on about the the value of practical effects, you know, mixed with with the computer effects. It, it still holds up to this day, even though the dinosaurs don't have feathers. Um, yeah. the, it, it's still a fantastic movie, and it, it will be a classic for a long time. Absolutely. And it has Jeff Goldblum sprawled out ooh, in all of his glory with ooh, his heaving, sexy. sweaty chest. Ooh, very sexy. Mm. Ooh, touchy, there's touchy, actually, maybe. Ooh, ooh. There's maybe actually just a, a statue somewhere. I'm not, I don't quite remember uh, where the Anyhow, statue is. Anyhow, this logo is absolutely iconic. I love that you picked this. I can't believe, folks. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe because it's inks, but... The amount of information found oh, on this man. thing is incredible. I, Type I, decoder. I came, logo. I came logo to, decoder. I, dinosaur <laughs> decoder. History decoder. This is all the decoders. It's all there. Yeah. yeah this is there. why we do this show. Absolutely. So, folks, please check it out. Check out those links for some fun stuff. Uh, inks. What a find. Way to dig what that up. Find. It was right in front of us the whole time. I had no idea. And I showed up to tapes today hanging my head in embarrassment because I had to tell him that I had 16 slides. Yep. He dra- <laughs> he, he, he laid a log and instead of doing it in the linoleum, he had to drag it across the carpet all <laughs> the way to the study. Uh. Uh, and speaking of the study, I'm smelling musty crypt smells. Some uh, pistachios. I'm, I'm moving 
the Some bookcase, Stasians. the secret bookcase doorway, and I'm heading down into the basement. Brengineer is sitting. <laughs> What is the uh, what is the Whoa. table what what is the table keeper going Whoa. to tell us the bookkeeper? Wait, this is the wrong beach, bro. Dude. Yeah, I thought this beach because you're not on, on the beach. This beach uh, vacation summer camp. sucks. No, wait, wait, oh. wait. This is not Lover's Rock. Hey, have you no, seen? No, this is this is summer camp. This is yeah. uh, you're in uh, Camp Crystal Lake, oh, kitties. That's, oh. no, that's fine, bro. Oh. <laughs> You're, you're you're sitting by you're sitting by your uh, you're a horny camp counselor it's the week before all the kitties show up and you start hearing the yeah um and suddenly the cam's all shaky and you don't know what's going on why is the why is the cam all shaky Janice? whose eyes am i seeing through whose eyes am i seeing through and the next Call thing you know me? you're murdering somebody and <laughs> you realize ah, ah, what's happening what am i doing and your bud light lime is empty and you've had way <laughs> too many of them <laughs> And then you realize you're sitting in this in the in the front row seats, and you've just seen Friday the Thirteenth. Oh. So oh. let me let me tell you a story about Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, now, tell us a story. Engineer's a storyteller. I've heard you're a storyteller. <laughs> when I was a kid, right, I wasn't allowed to watch uh, a lot of stuff. Right, my my parents were trying to protect me from all the scary stuff. In the world, but I was so drawn to it. I just, uh, I had a monster boner. Yeah, folks, if you don't know, if, if, if you have a monster don't... boner or a monster boner? Yeah, or both. If, if, both. You're, if you're the <laughs> parent of a child, uh, just look at Brengineer. If, if you don't let them watch things, they will turn into him. <laughs> yes. We, you know. Um, and so, anyways, we, we go to this church event, right? And... Uh, we're staying with all these different families in this hotel, right? And I get to go and sleep in the same room with the big kids. Ooh, like, the big boys. And there's only one. There's only one reason your parents uh, go ahead and put you <laughs> in a room with the other kids. So they and can you know make what more. That is. So they can swap keys. So, so they, they can, can make. They can. They can make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they can swap keys. Mom, Dad, why are you guys stocking up on Bud Light Lime? <laughs> <laughs> it's summertime, <Jeez>. baby. <laughs> so I'm sitting That's in this in this room with these older kids, and for me, older kids, these kids are probably like twelve. Oh, or, dude. And we're flipping through channels, and All I don't know, I'm sitting smells. there eating pistachios, <laughs> and next thing I know, there's this woman taking a bath. Mm. She's taking a bath on the TV. And suddenly, and Jesus like, left the room. I believe you can get And next thing I know, she's getting chased through the forest by a machete-wielding, uh, hockey mask-wearing giant <laughs> who chases this woman through the forest promptly gets blown into pieces by the military for some reason. And then those pieces go to a doctor who's examining the pieces. This Wait doctor a is this doctor then picks up the heart, which is sitting there and it begins to devour it and Amazing. is possessed by the spirit of, of uh, Jason Voorhees. Now this, this is, is not the, the terrible. Film. No, this is the terrible, <laughs> but amazing, uh, uh, Jason Goes to Hell, oh. which was supposed to be Didn't the last- Didn't you just say that this was like a, the a, like after a, a Christian service <laughs> or something? Yeah. And you were watching yeah, Jason this was, Goes to Hell? <laughs> so it was the influence of these kids. Now, that <laughs> hey, movie I watched recently- in there? Yeah. No, nothing. <laughs> Turn nothing. down. We're trying hey, to have hey, sex. Come on. Hey, come on now. <laughs> yeah, turn it down. Okay? I've only got so many BLs in me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there watching this munching my pistachios, and I'm terrified out of my mind. And later on, I eat some ice cream, and I throw up, and I end up going back to my uh, parents' room <laughs> and totally ruin their whole night. Oh, come um, on. Yes. Oh. So years Christmas later, I get- was a little I, bleak that year. A little bleak. <laughs> Years later, I uh, become total, uh, totally enamored with horror, and I get to watch the first Friday the 13th film. Yes. Now, uh, some background about final, uh, uh, Friday the 13th. In the uh, late 60s, the film Psycho came out, 
which a lot of people argue is the first slasher movie. Psycho is a corpse uh, by Alfred Hitchcock um, that has the infamous uh, shower stab scene. Um, it mm-hmm. was completely a new thing, a new concept, um, and it completely changed how thrillers and horror films were made uh, ever since. Stabbing um, people, a new concept. Stabbing would, people. Would, would you, in your opinion, <laughs> would that actually be the first slasher film? Or would it I had it been done before? I absolutely <laughs> think that was the that was the first uh, psycho, I, I think would be the first slasher film. Slasher. Um, okay. Slasher! But slasher! <laughs> and then um <laughs> Down, down the road uh, a few years, uh, I think it was about 10 years later, you get the film Halloween by John Carpenter. Oh, uh, man. Also a great film, great poster, um, and I think that's the that's really the first true, uh, true full-blooded slasher movie. Um, it wasn't just, you know, a thriller with a slasher scene. It was all about Michael Myers, the mass killer, Wandering around, killing horny teens. Yeah, an almost um, supernatural entity, killing machine. Killing machine, um, and for whatever reason, is after uh, sexually promiscuous uh, teenagers. Yeah. And there's always there's always a, uh, a girl known as uh, the final girl mm-hmm. who the, the, the killer just can't get. And she's the good yeah. girl. But he will spend now, how, a lot of time heavily yeah, mouth breathing and slowly walking yes, behind her. Exactly. Now, um, Halloween set up set up the the that archetype. Um, it put all those things uh, put it into one film. Now, Friday the Thirteenth cemented that concept and paved the way for the rest of the eighties um, for the slasher boom. And boy, was there a slasher boom! Um, so what we have here is we have the Friday the 13th poster. This is yes. such um, a cool poster. Yes. And VHS, yes. VHS uh, cover. Um, Inks, why don't you let me know uh, what, you, what you're seeing here, Inks? This is cool. This is cool. Okay, so you've got the silhouette of said giant. Um, you can see the beefy forearms uh, leading down yep, to Stabby. A, a hunting knife. And... In this silhouette of the giant is a painting of a forest scene with the uh, with so the, cool. the hormone riddled teenagers um, standing <laughs> in a in a very uh, uh, dark shadow of a cabin with yep. the moon. They're either Don a gi- they're either Don and a gin- Jimmy or they're cracking a BL. One of the two. Yeah, they, they, yeah they're like, hey, uh, yeah, I th- Jimmy was supposed to be back like like forty minutes ago. Um, and there is the classic full moon lighting up the forest and, uh, uh, showing the killer exactly where the, uh, idiot teens are. And then back to the hunting knife, it is actually dripping blood. And Friday the 13th is at the bottom of this, uh, this cover, this poster, but what the iconic lettering is, too is Jeez. covered with Absolutely. the red blood. So you've got you've got awesome painting, you've got cool framing with the body silhouette, and then you've got the logo and type design that is splashed with the blood because this, this is a perfect poster. Yeah, Absolutely, it, 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 it is. brings the killer Absolutely into iconic. our world because that blood is now on the thirteenth that you're reading. This is different too because what's kind of cool about this is. A lot of times, uh, posters draw your eyes towards the center, right, where the logo is traditionally. The logo right. is right in the center. And it's kind the, of in the center, the, but... The center of this is yeah. the is the image, is this big sprawling, and at the very bottom mm-hmm. you have the logo, and at the very top you have the um, the, the catchphrase. So it's it's kind of cool because you kind of have your eyes have to travel up and down, but you you kind of see everything at once is how I feel when I look at this thing. Uh, yeah. it, it has this great feeling of spaciousness uh, and kind of separation, which is kind of the idea with those films is eventually all, you know, all, everyone will get separated and killed. Now, it's kind of misleading as well, which is great uh, because this film, um, 
is not like its pre- predecessors or the movies that came afterwards in that um, it took itself a little bit more seriously than the films that followed. Oh, and yeah. it actually had, uh, it was actually more of a thriller in that you never saw who the killer was until the very end. You just see from the eyes of the killer. And so when you're looking, when you're looking at this figure, you see this muscly, uh, beefy sort of guy. What every Friday the 13th person knows is hockey mask wearing Jason Voorhees is not in this film at all. Nope. No. It is his mother. It's not. It's, it's the mother and it's setting up this whole saga. And uh, Jason, Jason appears actually in the second film with a bag (laughs) as a mask, not the hockey mask. The hockey mask doesn't actually appear until the third. Uh, Excuse me, Brengineer. Actually, he appears at the very end of the first movie when he pops out of the water as a zombie. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Thank you. So anyways. Wait, actually, real quick. Brengineer, you brought something up really cool. You're talking about how I just connected this. Psycho is the first slasher, right? This totally pays homage to that because um, uh, what what I forget the antagonist the antagonist um, name in Psycho uh, Bates Norman Bates uh, mm-hmm. is pretending to be his mom and in this Voorhees' mom is pretending to be Jason killing the kids or rather she she's being told by her son to do things so either way there's definitely a a um, yeah. And they both kill people with knives. Yeah, don't Come listen on. to your kids. Yeah. Don't listen yeah. to your kids. Um, you know? Yeah, there's definitely a <laughs> lot of um, influence from Psycho in this film. Um, it, it, the, the kills get very creative. Um, Kevin Bacon's in this film, and oh. uh, he gets uh, he gets stabbed through a bed and out through the neck with a, a, a hunting That's the arrow. one I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So this this movie uh, didn't quite come out in summer. Um, it came out uh, in May, but um, hey, that's it was summer still... in Texas. School's out well, okay, in well, May. Well, there we are. Um, it was still a huge blockbuster. It was made for half a million dollars. It made sixty million dollars. Um, well, it was a huge done. hit. Now um, that's the film. Now the poster, the poster is by um, Alex Ebel. Uh, who is no longer alive. He was born in uh, 1932. He died in 2013. And Mm. honestly, there is no information about this person, uh, uh, except that he was born in Mexico City. And uh, he was a horror and fantasy illustrator. But he um, has contributed art um, to Heavy Metal Magazine, Space Science Fiction, Fantastic Stories Magazines, and all kinds of... Um, book covers and posters. Ooh. Um, Alex E. Bedder. So he, wow. he did, is, this, he, is this all he his did art? The painting. This is oh. all his art. Now he oh, is responsible real quick. So oh. he is responsible for the painting um, of the Friday the 13th, but the actual layout is by um, famed designer Spiro Angelica. Oh. Um, who did a lot of different designs, uh, design work, um, including the original <laughs> Indiana Jones posters. Oh, um, really? Yeah. So you can go, uh, you can go back and look at those. Um, but back to um, Alex Ebel here, um, you can see some of his work. Uh, this first image here of the snow, sort of a snow planet. So cool. Is It's real cool. So, so cool. that's the cover. Um, <laughs> that's the cover for um, a really famous Ursula K. Le Guin book, The Left Hand of Darkness, which is considered Whoa. her masterpiece. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah. So um, over here, you have a fantastic story magazine that he did. And this is actually, he did a whole series of, um, paintings for a boot company. So, um, <laughs> I want that dog between that, my that, boots. That'll make me buy some boots. Yeah. <laughs> on, on this uh, ad here for Nakona boots, you've got this, uh, woman, uh, stri- uh, st- you, you see her from the boots, uh, boots down. Um, astride a snarling wolfhound, <laughs> which is just what, staring right into your I soul. I don't know what they're trying to say, but I have no saying, idea. This is saying no one is going to touch you if you wear these boots. Yeah. 
I, I want die. the tagline to be like sandals bite go with boots yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. now i really wish i knew more about his style um and and how he how he painted because i it's kind of hard to tell what his medium is um due to lack of sort of grain i'd probably say it's probably bored and acrylic yeah. Um, but like I said, I don't know. With the left hand of darkness here, I can definitely tell that the clouds uh, have been airbrushed. Your favorite. My well, favorite. You, you never know, though. I mean, like you, you like Drew, Drew Struzan as an example. I look at his stuff and I think it's airbrushed, but it's actually acrylics and, and colored pencil. But it's just done yeah. on a giant board. So you're able to get that creamy texture and, and <clears throat> yeah. uh, um, uh, blend because it's so big that uh, everything, the blending, when it's shrunk down, looks just seamless. Right. Did Definitely. he do this uh, well-endowed snake goddess as well? Yep, he did. This is his heavy metal magazine cover. This is beautiful. Oh, it looked snake goddess. <laughs> I, I thought I'd throw this, um, this dinosaur one in here for inks. Woo! And uh, funny coincidence there. Uh, I see the dead one they ruled uh, the world. has done. Now this <laughs> they, they, they is the a Jurassic Park. This is a Jurassic. See, he's got the out. Well, that's not an Allosaurus. That is a Serratosaurus. There's feathers with a, uh, a Brachiosaurus in the background. Oh no! Um, we just we just went actually, back in the ocean. He actually did the thing where my robo the, has a the hole. I'm starting to sink. A, and then I the, can't breathe. The toe, but the There's toe, the toe claw my is the only claw. <laughs> Well, fantastic! I, oh, I'm back. The, I'm back. Uh, the 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 artistic spread here is pretty amazing. I mean, honestly, the the snake woman doesn't even. It looks. I mean, it almost looks like graphic art to me. Like there's yeah. a yeah, definitely. It definitely is different um, than some of his other stuff, and it definitely looks like a later edition of Heavy Metal magazine. He's super um, versatile. He's super versatile. I mean, you you go from the sci-fi looks like uh, vintage sci-fi to like this, uh, you know, uh, really detailed, almost uh, scientific art wolf, and then um, really good paleo art, and then almost comic book art with the heavy metal. I mean, yeah, the guy was I a mean, chameleon. His, his career spanned uh, or spanned a very long time, and it's so weird that there's not anything about him on the internet yeah. his his web he had a website his website's down um so yeah there's there's literally no information except for you know a paragraph on wikipedia so um i just i, I pulled together what i could but um it's a shame and there's a lot of, lot of artists out there who are fantastic and um yeah i mean i it turns out i actually had one of his um books on my personal shelf no way this oh, is yeah. No. yeah so this is a cover for um another ursula Kalo Gwynn book called city of illusions what a trip and from from looking at this i can definitely tell that it is acrylic uh on board um just by looking at that but even in this book i'm holding uh there is no credit for the cover artist yeah in this book Boo. so common I, there, there was nothing. There was nothing cover art by so on and so forth at all. I, I figured it out because I mean I saw on the internet that he did it, but there's his tiny little um, signature on the mm, bottom left hand corner of this scrawled. of this photo. Put, so um, artists, yeah. put your signature, put your signature on your pieces, yeah, or your or your little sigil or whatever it is you paint, uh, so people know who you are. I'm even not 100% that this heavy metal cover is his. Um, but when I looked up, um, when I was looking up his uh, heavy metal magazine um, contributions, um, this is, was saying this is one of the ones he did. Oh. Um, so I, I got to go by that. Well, excellent. Well, this is go. fantastic. Yeah, and, I, and that Friday the 13th cover is so iconic. Folks, if you haven't seen it, you absolutely have to go look at it. I mean, that that cover is it, it holds up today, um, and it is oh yeah, just the most Brengenerian summer pick of <laughs> all time. Did I not say yes. Inks he would pick a forest? There, there is something there is something for everyone out there, and Brengenier found a summer blockbuster that that ticked all the boxes for him. 
And and I'll say this now real there... quick. Uh, real quick, it, this is kind of a lifeline. Maybe we don't know much about Alex E. Bell because a lot, he's on a lot of Spanish-speaking websites. So if you guys out there um, maybe could help us out with that, if anybody's uh, listening that, that speaks Spanish mm, and has seen more yes. stuff about him on um, Spanish-speaking Well, that was sites, where he's born. We will, it, it was we will get he's... out our translation dictionaries and do our best. Try it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he was living in America because it says uh, – some of the information was he was uh, Eng- English speaking, but oh, okay. he could be bilingual. I don't well, know. his nephew know, needs point. to make a bad website. <laughs> so that yeah. we can write. <laughs> if, if you know anything it about, about him. I mean, it happens yeah. sometimes where you just want to fucking do your art. You don't want to do all this other, like, oh, I got to do a website. You got to set up a thing. It got to, like, you know, a lot of times artists, they just want to jump on that art motorcycle and ride. And and sometimes ride you have guys like, uh, like Michael Whalen. Whose website is just a treasure trove Ugh. that you can get lost in. Oh, treasure. All right. Treasure. Well, that's, uh, treasure. that's what I've got tonight, folks. Thanks for listening. Uh, this is the pistachio uh, crip creep, creeper out. Uh, <laughs> moving on out of here. Welcome back to the pistachio miss hour. Uh, we will be closing the coffin soon. And make sure to look over your shoulders on the way home. I'm, I'm so okay. So we're moving on to tapes, and I'm sensing a theme with tonight's uh, with tonight's blockbusters. All of them involve a a uh, a hunter. All of a them involve stalker. A, Some might even say a predator. Mm. That's right, folks. And there's a forest yeah. forest jungle theme too. Oh, absolutely, oh, yes. yeah. It might be yeah. deciduous or it might be ferns, but there is a jungle. And yes, get ready to cover yourself in mud and yell, nyah, nyah, <laughs> because <laughs> I'm about to take you into the sweaty, ripped, muscly, veiny, <laughs> pumping film yeah. that is known as Predator from 1987. And folks, if this, it's this summertime... This movie makes you want to... This movie makes you want to grab your friend by the hand and go, son of a bitch. <laughs> son of a bitch. Yeah. This movie, you've got your Bud Light in one hand. You've got your half-naked boyfriend or girlfriend sitting on your lap. And you've got either this giant club-like erection or your ovaries have popped out and turned into a flail that you can yeah. just smash car windows with. That's and there's just this- pistachios everywhere. You go everywhere. You, you, yeah, you you take the old underwear off of your weights and just start pumping immediately because you gotta get that pump while you're watching Arnold. You pull a squid out of the ocean, you rip off its beak, and you give yourself a tattoo with its beak and its ink. <laughs> That's what happens when you watch this film. So the, the folks, one stop shop, beak and ink, yeah. all in one creator. We're yeah. going to we're going to dive in here and I have some fun information here. So first of all, I just want to start with the cover. This is the cover for the poster and it is also the cover for the uh, VHS film right here, uh Predator Boys. Boys. <laughs> what are you looking at? Boys. What are you looking um, at? Okay, it's it's so good. But it's, it's so, so good bad. because it's really terrible. It's awesome. uh, it's pretty horrible. It's okay. So here's what we got. We've we've got a uh, a big pixely mess, and it's 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 perfect. Uh, what you're seeing is Arnold in all of his muscly, greasy '80s glory, yeah. and mm-hmm. uh, in the background is you're kind of seeing the, the whole idea behind it is you're seeing what the predator sees, right? Yes. Yeah. So you've got this sort of um, they're playing around with infrared cameras at this time, so. Um, this is like when infrared was coming out, and it's like, oh, infrared, cutting so cool. edge, summer. cutting yeah. edge, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> yeah. So everything has to be muscly and cutting edge, and um, that was definitely what you're seeing here. And there's this big, uh, pixely <laughs> like weapon sight, like you're looking through a scope. Except this isn't even what the predator scope looks like, so it's pretty misleading. Yeah. Uh, and then it just says <laughs> Schwarzenegger. On the top, the point is that 
The point is, is that Schwarzenegger is a target. And again, like we talked about, the cover is a little misleading because if you hadn't seen the trailer, you wouldn't necessarily think that this was about an alien. But it is, in fact, about an alien. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Predator, Go uh, see Predator. it is about a fantastic creature, which we're going to get into. But yes, um, this cover uh, it is iconic. It is beautiful in its schlockiness. Uh, just covered in all sorts of ridiculous covers, the font, uh, colors. The text. The text. It is. Yeah. The freaking Predator font. It's so iconic. Damn it, this movie is the best. I'm roiding out. I'm roiding out of my mind. <laughs> Give me my, 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 my veins are popping Do out. It. Give me some pistachios. Do it. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it, I, I will say, like, one of the things that I discovered with researching Jurassic Park is, like, all of these wheels started turning simultaneously. It wasn't like the movie got made, the logo got made, the poster got made, the thing. all No, this was all going on all at once. And the, the, the wheels of the engine started turning. So I'm guessing that they had storyboard, that they had this idea that... That it's gonna it's gonna be a predator and it's gonna be going through the jungle. It's gonna be scoping out Arnold. He's gonna it's gonna want to go and just sink its teeth right into those big arms of his. And it's gonna have a scope with alien writing. And they kind of they kind of piece together this um, what it might look like. And then it ended up. It wants to lick his muscly uh, his That's muscly right. sweat off. It can off. smell the Paste sweat. It, it can smell it the oil him. off of him. And in fact, give me this picture. I'll be right back. Um, <laughs> So but let yeah. me let me let me dig in here on the movie a little bit. So this was directed yeah. by uh, John uh, McTiernan, uh, and this was his first major film, folks. Really? He made a perfect movie first go, no problem. <laughs> first try, uh, no big deal. Um, by the way, this did come out June twelfth, so this is actually a summer movie. Nailed it Hot on all movie. fronts. Sweat. All of our summer movies movie. came out in summer. Shane Black. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, Shane Black wrote this. He wrote Lethal Weapon, if you didn't know, uh, and some other pretty fantastic things. Uh, I can't credit this fully, but I guess uh, what was kind of funny, Shane Black is the first uh, of the ops guys to get killed off. And part of the reason for that is that um, he was brought on to rewrite the script during the filming of the film. And when they asked him to do it, he said, no, I'm just an actor in this film. So they killed him off first. To get him off of the movie. Oh! Which I thought was pretty hilarious. Oh, yeah, just an actor? Well, now you're Oh, really? You don't want to work on the film, hey? Uh, Another thing I read said that he was sort of a watchdog for uh, John McTiernan because he was so new. They wanted Shane Black to kind of help him with any stumbles. Um, I didn't find that in any other articles, but I thought it was an interesting theory. So, uh, yeah, this film, of course, stars... Both the governor of California, the governor of Minnesota, <laughs> the running uh, up of Kentucky, and the voice of Optimus Prime from the 80s cartoon. Yes. Oh, so, so uh, <laughs> oh, Jesse so Ventura. Jesse Ventura is this hulking, tobacco chewing, Gatling gun wielding, Australian hat wearing. Hat wearing. <laughs> Just yeah. so ridiculous. Well, and, and yeah. you know what's funny is I can't remember what it was, uh, so don't quote me on this one, but there was an interview done with him where he was talking about how they had to measure, they had to do their measurements, and his arms were bigger than Arnold's, and he was like, that's right, Mr. Olympia couldn't hang <laughs> with old Jesse uh, Slickhead Ventura and his bigger arms. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. Arnold actually lost weight for this film. He, he did that in yeah. several films, but this one he cut down because he was, you know, the problem is when you're in a movie, you're too big. You don't want to be too, too big for a movie because you don't want to make the camera explode with your muscles. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so basically the premise of the movie, I haven't seen it. They're going to rescue uh, hostages from Guatemala from a bunch of gorillas down there. Uh, and his friend Dylan tricks him into going down there because the CIA agents are already dead and really was just going to use them to wipe out said Guatemalan uh, resistance fighters. Uh, and then they get hunted by a predator known as the, oh, it's the predator, uh, who, this is the interesting thing right here. So, uh, yes. fellas, this will be linked in. Go ahead and take a look at the original Predator suit there. Yeah. Oh, so oh, man. this is actually the what they were going to go with. This no. was what the first. So, folks, if you've seen Predator, what you oh. see on the film, the ama- I, like 
the creature, the predator is so amazing looking. It is one of it, the best yep. film applications ever. And this shit that you are looking at looks like something from a 1950s film. Uh, oh, so bad. Do you know who, who's under that rubber? Yes. So, so here's the thing. So this was this, this was the original design. It was supposed to be originally they were going with like kind of a, a feline reptilian fast creature that would move and flip around yeah. the jungle. So they were like, we're going to get Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's who's going to be in this. And <laughs> indeed, they had Jean-Claude Van Damme in the suit. No shit. The problem was they when uh-huh. they got him and the actors together, all these other guys are like two feet taller than Jean-Claude Van Damme. And they're oh, like, no. they're like, this doesn't no, work. No, no. He's tiny. What is he going to do against? <laughs> nyah, nyah. He's not going to yeah. do anything. This isn't threatening. <laughs> so they they shit the bed. So what they did is they uh, they said, uh, Van Damme, you're out. Uh, you're not going to make the cut. They hired uh, Kevin Peter Hall, who was seven foot two. He was yes. huge. There we go. A huge dude. Um, and they they hired Stan Winston. We are going to get into Stan Winston uh, in October. Stan Winston is one of the Genius. faces of horror special effects. He is one of yeah. the kings. Uh, if covers are a legend, Stan Winston is a legend in the creatures he designed. Um, interesting story. They flew Stan down to work on the, the the new suit, and while he was doing it, he was sitting next to James Cameron, uh, and he was chatting with James Cameron, and James Cameron saw the sketches he was doing for Predator, and he's like, yeah, you know, I always wanted to see a creature with mandibles. And so, uh, Winston... James Cameron? Yeah, Winston yeah. Put, put the mandibles on the creature, and that's how we got the Predator. Uh, it was know. from some... Yep, it was from mm-hmm. some suggestion from James Cameron. So, we have this shitty clunky looking thing yeah. that does not fit in the jungle. Stan Winston comes down and we get the most iconic creature of film of all film, um, yeah. which is the predator Next to the xenomorph. Next, Next to, the, to xenomorph. the xenomorph. And of course it's, it's, only, it's only fitting that they're together. Yeah. Those two things have to fuck. It just has to happen. <laughs> and they did. And they have. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough about that, the first crossover uh, for the Predator and Alien was Dark Horse, of course, 1989 yes. in a comic uh, stream. Uh, of course, after that, Alien vs. Predator kind of took off. There were books uh, starting in 1994, and of course, it was fully cemented, some would say, in 2004 with a film. Mm. Uh, but well, we digress. Well, well real quick, uh, not too far yeah. from us is the the town in which uh, Dark Horse is, uh, the offices are housed. Milwaukee. Absolutely. If you walk down there, you can see the Predator in all of its plastic glory in the window. Just absolutely, just yeah. sitting there going. Ah! Yeah. Sorry, that's more. I I can't do the I can't do the Predator. Um, yeah, and so oh, another an interesting story. So one of the things uh, people were talking about this being you know the most manly uh, most manly movie ever made. Arnold Schwarzenegger paid. <laughs> To have a gym delivered wherever they went in Mexico. He had it assembled from several freight trucks and he would wake up the other crew members at 530 in the morning so that they could get together and work out. (laughs) Well, Well, I've heard it seems only natural. (laughs) <laughs> well, and, and I've heard interviews with him because it's so important to him that he will have a separate trailer that's a gym on most of his movies so he can work out in between shots, you know. You get the quick 15-minute pump. You go on your lunch. It will, how long does it take to eat? You can do 20 minutes. No problem. Yeah, you cannot have dialogue. How are you yeah. going to do your words? You never, you never how are you going get, to do your you words never, if yeah. there's no blood? Yeah. Your muscle, your, your brain is a muscle. You, it you is a piece of meat. You have to exercise it. And you do that with your arms and your legs yeah. and your ass cheeks. So get out there in the jungle <laughs> and sweat. But yeah, this is this was the most uh, physically, I guess, exhausting. They were filming in Mexico. It was hot. They were running Ooh. around. All of these guys, even, even Arnold said they just got their asses kicked. And that is the ultimate summer thing. You're sitting in your seat, you're drinking your cold Coca-Cola, and you're watching these guys sweat, Coca-Cola. running through this jungle, fighting off this creature. But we're going to get back to the cover. So, <laughs> yes. as Bridgineer said, the first cover here, it, it's iconic. It is good in kind of a... 
kind of a silly summer way. Um, but if you scroll down, what you're going to see actually is a Polish version, which I think is way more effective. Oh, yeah, it's uh, cleaned up. Yeah, uh, look, I, I love how... So they still keep with the um, the sort of predator vision effect, but instead of having oh, the... Yeah. Just the... the um, the 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 heat ray sperm all over the cover it's just right. kind of fading behind arnold in this kind of ghost yeah. image yeah nah i like the other one better than this you don't you like you, you like the spray you, li- you like, like the, the this heat is, spray yeah this is yeah, cleaner this is, this is a, it's a little lazy it's a little see lazy. i love iconic. this i i also love the banana yellow yeah uh I'm yeah, I, I think no. this is a really cool cover. I would actually no, uh, nothing beats that red with the white shadow, uh, drop shadow effect on I, the first. I one. will say I think the red is more effective, but uh, I love I love the way they they tackled the the shadow effect in this. I thought that was a right. really really cool thing to do. Um, although Brendan, you pick uh, put up a good point that uh, it is a lot cleaner. In fact, Arnold looks like he has been cut out. And then pasted, yeah, uh, onto. Oh, he absolutely has. Look at look at yeah. his arm over the ferns. <laughs> like where's where's the rest of it? Where's his yeah, body? Yeah. It's just they they covered it up with yellow paint splotches, though. I don't know. I, I, um, I like it still. I still like it. I, and, I don't know, the, but it reminds me of. I didn't mention this on the last episode. Uh, Renato Casaro came up and he had said <laughs> that he got out of the game when they started doing digital covers. Right. And they were just they would just change the lettering or the, the language of the poster and send it off to the next country. And he said that there's really, there's a lot of value in doing a poster for each country that, that resonates with that culture. And you have just provided us with the perfect segue. So, um, oh. and, okay. And why, so, why don't, why don't we have posters like this so, in America? So, so the other posters <laughs> are acceptable. The next poster we're about to look at is it's a mandatory. fucking, masterpiece it is yes. one of the coolest posters i feel like i have ever seen uh and this is by a Thai easily artist. yes this look is look at this thing okay hey. yep here we go so this is by a thai artist <laughs> named tong d penumis who wants to someone go okay, okay where to start okay first of all let's start with a backdrop okay you've got you've got <laughs> what do you even do what what to say Okay, so you've got so you've got good. helicopters <laughs> flying flying through the sky in the background, okay? And then you've got the predator filling up nearly the nearly the whole background. Now this is in um uh um collage style. So it's got all kinds of different stuff from the film. And the predator's reaching out and the predator's in like it's normal, you know, uh in the dull sort of greens and and blues and stuff but the mm-hmm. hand has this bright vibrant pink yeah it's the got heat. the heat ray with the scorpion yeah and and there's dangling skinless <laughs> bodies hanging from the end of his dreads no. you've got the you've got the gatling gun yeah. yeah front center is arnold like he's got like the he's got the machine gun out. He's coming like he's just risen out of the water. He's absolutely dripping with moisture. But he looks like behind prey. him. He looks like prey. Yeah, yeah. And all the other ones, he looks like the predator. This he looks like <laughs> a scared deer. The rest of the team is there, and you've got a uh, sort of a racist Indian stereotype guy like cutting his chest with his blade, getting ready for his final stand, <laughs> and. uh Oh man! I mean, there's just there's just so much. It's so well painted, it's so well done. Yes. Uh, I mean, oh, you've even got like Arnold down here, a little Arnold like in the mud, like yep. crawling out yes. of the. And uh, oh, there's like so many details. This is it's just, just uh, an there's, eye. There's so many folks. details. This, you have to go on. So I I, I have provided a link. Um, the gentleman responsible yeah. for getting this commissioned. Uh, he, he has a website that's actually all about his personal film uh, poster archive, and he has in-depth pictures of each segment of this poster. And when you get in closer, like, cool. this is when art gets unbelievable to me. This is when art enters that realm of, of high masterhood. Um, yeah, how do um, you get there? Yeah, so let's talk. I, I, here's the thing. Again, can I, like... Can I play Bringenerian for just one second? Can I play... Play Bringenerian. The only thing... It has the thing, pink... The thing I don't like about this poster is 
if you haven't seen the movie, it gives too much away. Oh, that's, that's the fine. only thing I'll say. This is a movie for a, a person that has seen the movie, you know, 42 times and wants a poster in their room to show the world what, what they're really about, to show Nancy that, like, this is the relationship she's about to get into. Um, <laughs> these are all the scars. <laughs> this is this your scars. Scars. These I've been are in the jungle. Girl. I've been fighting monsters. Yeah. Is this what you want, Nancy? That's the, the, yeah, that's the only thing I will say about it is that it does give away the predator who doesn't show up till later in the movie. It it, it it gives away the mud scene. It gives away a lot. But here's here's what we've learned. We've learned that the Brengenerian style... Um, encompasses many things, but it's a lot of mist. It's okay if you see things, as long as it's misty and has an atmosphere. The Inksian style is he doesn't want to know what's going on. He wants I, suggestions. That is my style. Yeah. I want to see side boob. I don't want to see the full frontal thing. Yeah, but here's surprised. what we've learned. Folks, here's what we've learned. There are two ways to do an effective cover, especially for a film. You either go very subtle or you go all out. Balls to the wall or not at all. Because the thing is... Um, the, this, if I was a kid and I saw this on a movie, there is no way in hell I would not watch this. There yeah, that is, is so true. There is no way this would not be in my basket with my weird cummy receipt tape. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. would be happening. Either but, you um, tease look, or you commit. You can't go halfway. Absolutely. So here's the thing about this this poster. Um, this this was not an original poster for the film. This was done in 2016. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, so. Okay. Yes. So that this is another thing. This this was later. Um, this was later done. This was a personal commission by uh, a guy named Eddie Shannon, who I've like I said I've put his his link on here. He's got a website called uh, Film on Paper, um, and he commissioned it through a, per, a mutual friend. So uh, apparently, Tong D. Uh, Panumas is not a he. He's one of these guys who's not very reachable. Um, he lives somewhere in Thailand. He's done a he has a wealth of work, which we're about to look at. But uh, Ooh, no one really knows a lot about him. In fact, the only information I got from this guy's website, and apparently all he found out with that was that this guy was born in 1947, which means that Ooh. he is a vampire. Because if you look at the picture of him, <laughs> he looks like he's maybe, oh my maybe God. 50. He's got uh, more hair yeah. than I've ever had. Yeah, <laughs> I think we do. <laughs> uh, and what a badass! Look at him there with his predator claws, his serious painting skunks. face. Perfect uh, skunk stripe down the middle of the Dude. hair. His hair, his, his, his hair is. This guy is. This guy's as old as my dad, and he's got perfectly <laughs> jet black hair, except for this like one perfect little like white streak going down the middle. Yeah, Thailand. <laughs> tell me your secret. Tell me your secret. Uh, so I did find out that uh, this was uh, painted on canvas. Apparently, you can see the grain um, if you get in close. I can't with my eyes, but you know. I guess if you're looking at it up close, uh, this was, uh, I presume done on oils. I don't think you could get this kind of detail. No, this is um, definitely an oil business. Yeah. The size, this is, it's 28 and 5 16 inches by 41 inches. Woo. It's a beast. That is a This thing is okay. huge. Can I, can I point out, so we have a picture of the artist posing with the image now, normally, uh, folks, when when you do your your image, right? It's just the image. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. He is he is painted on the Predator logo and credits onto the yeah. actual painting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's absolutely. So cool. So and that's and harder here's, than doing anything else is to keep straight lines. That's the hardest thing. Well, to and what's it's clean? What's amazing? I think so. As like Inks was just saying, which was really cool. We're gonna get in this in another episode. Oh, folks, there's so many, but um, Thai posters, they time. do that. They paint the lo they paint the logos of the oh films, as we'll see. But different countries, they all have a different way of tackling posters. And so here's kind of something a little found, I, I found out. Um, in from So specifically, Tong Di was active from the 70s to 90s, and that's apparently when he kind of stopped. Just like we, just like we were talking about um, uh, oh with, that, with, the, with the other gentleman there. Uh, things started getting digital and he kind of stopped. He still oh, does private Renato? commissions. Yeah. Renato. Yeah. Um, oh boy. Uh, but yeah, so Thailand, when films came out, they would, they would commission, uh, film studios would commission personally artists from Thailand to have representation for the films in their own style, yes. which is so Do that. cool. It's so freaking cool. Spend a and little a lot money. Of, yeah. And a lot of these posters, 
folks are just as cool, if not cooler, than some of the other posters. Um, go ahead and scroll down and take a look at this just oh, mindgasm yeah. that is Apocalypse Now. This um, is. This now, is by Tong D. Uh, Apocalypse Now is one of my all-time favorite films. Yes. Ever. Not the not the Redux version, the original 1979 theatrical Francis Ford Coppola masterpiece. Perfect movie in every way. Just this, like Predator. This uh, th- this poster is not Both in the a is not a great representation of this movie. But it is a fantastic poster. It's, the the artistry is incredible. It is psychedelic. Um, it is, which I think is a fair representation. The movie is pretty psychedelic, but this looks way too action packed. Do you see this? This looks like you're going into an action movie, and it's it's not uh, an an action movie. Uh, one <laughs> one bit. Do you see the Apocalypse Now logo on the bottom? Not I do. Not only in Thai and style, but also in in. Yep. It's phenomenal. Uh, and you've it got, is, again it is phenomenal. Uh, and there's so there's so many, so like like you have you have freaking <laughs> Dennis Hopper popping out of the top of of uh, uh, Marlon Brando's camouflaged face yes. with another floating Marlon Brando face like in the middle, oh. uh, just just what I mean it, it is incredible it is an incredible it, piece of work. But um, and once again, yeah, folks, Apocalypse Now and Predator are very similar movies because the protagonist is covered in mud, trying to assassinate <laughs> somebody in both films. So they're basically yeah. the same thing. They, they, um, okay, they, yeah. there is uh, there is some take slight, a look at his Escape from New York. You, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Which same movie? Oh, uh, same movie. Oh, oh, tape, 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 tape. Oh. Take a look at Escape from look New York. This. Take okay, a look I, at the oh. Lambs. Okay. This looks like this looks like someone like way smaller than Kurt Russell cut off Kurt Russell's <laughs> face and stuck it onto their face and it's not it's not it's not fitting it's not fitting quite right. It's, it's, <laughs> but all it's, the same it's foreshortening for sure and, it, the, and it's, yeah the dynamics of this image are insane. Yeah, yeah and, and this look, is a look lot at more the faces the look film. at the the juxtaposition of faces on the silence of the lambs. And again, folks, we talked, we talked about, I do not remember the episode, but we talked about how different countries kind of use different color palettes. And you can definitely tell oh, there's yeah. a lot of purples and oranges. Oh, and pink. there's pink color. buildings and the, in the, in the, in the heat and the, the sun. And, oh man. It, it's all sweaty. It's this, all sweaty. <laughs> Just, it's amazing how you find these things. I mean, Granted, this is not an original Predator poster. I hope this is on a Blu-ray. Not that I will ever purchase the Blu-ray, but uh, I hope this gets slapped on a cover. um, Because to me, this just perfectly represents, you know, Arnold crawling through the mud, getting ready to nah his way to smashing some Predator juices on a giant log. Yeah, it is. It's a great representation as a fan. And like I said, it this is a perfect poster to commemorate your love of the movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Look yeah. At that and, thing. and the cool, the cool thing is too, uh, the gentleman who, uh, had this poster commissioned, he gave Tong D a couple slight notes and the rest what he just said, run wild. This is him running wild. Dude. Uh, and apparently Thai post, a lot of Thai posters, um, they, you know, they don't have the same censorship guides. So when we jump into that, which we will, we're going to see some fun stuff because, you know, tapes likes, he likes, he likes it all out there. <laughs> and, and that's what I want to see. And that's what yeah. this is, folks. Tapian. Uh, yeah. So again, Predator is just, it is the spirit of sweat. It is the spirit yeah. of muscles. If you want those bola ovaries, if you want that phallus club, put on Predator with your Bud Light and Lime in this horrible 90 degree heat and get ready to sweat yourself to a good chicken time. A good, you know what? Cover decoder world tour will be a thing. It's on the grill. It's all. It's it is on. It's time for the lunch. Grill. Grab a fork. It's, it's next to the. It's next to the Boca burgers that no one's gonna eat except for Terry, <laughs> your cousin. 
Wait, Get what? out of here, Terry. Yeah. No one wants to watch leaving uh, leaving yeah, I just, I just Seattle. Like there should be options, you know. Leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> no, I meant to go with the one with Tom Hanks, but I fucked it up. <laughs> Well, folks. something about sleepless in Seattle. Sleepless in Seattle. Oh, there you go. Yeah, no one wants that, Terry. Thank you for getting your big old tub of of heart stopping po- popcorn. Your big old gallon of um, of BLs. Yeah, that you snuck in in your 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 shorts. Uh, thank you for joining us on this journey through the summertime blockbusters that have shaped our our childhoods and still stick to our ribs today. Um, our website is coverdecoder.com, which will have the links to these images so you can follow along. If you, you want to see sweat, yeah. if you want to see knives, you want if you want to see, see dinosaurs. Yeah, you got to do it. Go to the website. See the, see yeah, the sweat. Do it now. Do Get it to now. the website. <laughs> Get there now. <laughs> um, and if you have any questions or comments or, or covers, Oh, send us covers. Send us covers. Send us those covers. And you will not be sorry, folks. We will. We will love them. We will tear them down. We will build them up. And you as can of win right now, merch. As of right now, we are looking through the covers that we have acquired, and yes. we're gonna pick one. So if it it's right happen. now, open your phone. You have a phone, most likely, unless you're Brengineer and you send things by pigeon. Open your your thing. Think of your favorite movie. Send us the cover. Guess what? You might get a free shirt. Do yeah. it. Where do, do you it. send that I to? send things by doing? Carrier Ghost, okay? Carrier Ooh. Ghost. Ooh. Ooh. Very spooky. Ooh, I feel like, oh, message. You know, master Brengineer, I have another <laughs> cover for you. Um, yes, where do you send them? If you're not sending by Ghost, you send them to CoverDecoder at gmail.com. You could also, you can also uh, DM us at... Uh, at Cover Decoder on Instagram. DM is short. It's what the kids say for direct message us your covers on Instagram. Um, yeah. And please review us. Follow us on whatever platform you're listening to. It really, it's going to help us out. We're coming back for another season. We want to keep this thing going. You, you could carry these, these young cover lads into the future on your back. Yes. Yes. You, we shall, we shall be forever grateful. And remember, yeah. covers will find a way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah.